Hey guys, being an entrepreneur is awesome. It's one of the most rewarding things I've ever done, but it's also seriously one of the hardest things I've ever done. So if you've ever felt like that crushing despair, that discouragement that comes from when a customer doesn't pay you on time, or you can't make payroll, or you just don't know what to do, that feeling is just a mental block, and we're gonna get you through that right now. Every entrepreneur says the same thing. I spend my whole day putting out fires. I might as well be a fireman. And they run, they just run around with like, like, you know, like a chicken with their head cut off. And if that's you, that's one of the main reasons why you're feeling depressed, depressed, or discouraged. Oh my gosh, guys. Or discouraged. These D words are killing me. It's Monday morning. But if you're feeling that just complete, like nothing is going my way, that's because you've got all these fires you're putting out now. I'm gonna tell you a quick story because you know what? Some of the fires might actually be your fault. You could be creating the fires unknowingly and then just running around putting them out, okay? And it might be by the way that you're managing your company or your staff or just how you're spending your time in general. And I bet if you kind of change things up, most of those fires would probably go away and you could do value added things. So quick story. This is a story of me when I was 12 years old and I almost killed myself. So here I am. I loved fishing. I loved going out and fishing, and I loved also smoked like meat, like beef jerky, those kinds of things, right? I was reading in a scout book one day that you could create your own like smokehouse. You put your meat in it, and it smokes it, and it's like homemade jerky. I thought this is the greatest thing ever. So what you do is you get like on a cement slab, you build like this brick house, and you put your meat in the brick house, and you leave a little vent in the bottom, and then in front of the cement slab in the dirt, you build a fire pit and you direct the smoke and the heat through the vents in the brick house, up through the top of the chimney, and it hits the meat on the way out. And I thought, this is freaking genius. So I built the smoke pit, and I went out and I caught some fish, and I was gonna smoke, you know, trout. It was going to be great. So I put the fish in the brick house, and I put the fire in the fire pit, and I had to go to school. This was like way early in the morning, and I had like 15 minutes to get to school, and it takes 10 minutes to get to school, and so I'm sitting there going, oh my gosh, how am I gonna light this fire and, and have it, <laughs> I can't believe my parents let me do this. I, I don't think they knew that I did it, but anyway, I gotta light the fire and I gotta, I gotta get this going so I get to school quickly. I don't have time to sit here and fiddle with, with getting this thing started. I need to start it fast. So my 12 year old brain went, gasoline. I didn't even like consider <laughs> what the gasoline would do or how it would make the, the you know, the, the meat taste, because you know, you have this like weird gasoline taste to jerky, it's not good. But anyway, this is what I did. So I ran into the garage and I got a big thing of gasoline and I poured it onto like the smoke chips in the fire, not even thinking of, how, of the way this was going to taste. But anyway, I got a whole, way too much gasoline in there. Like, I, like it was puddled up, like a lot. And um, if you've ever lit gasoline on fire, just a side warning, it's, it's not like, wow, there's a fire, it's like, so there's a fire, it's instant. And so I, so I got I got down close, I don't even know why I got close, but I got down close on my hands and my knees and I, I lit the match and I threw it in and instantly just And the smell of burning hair and like rotting flesh just instantly filled my nose. My eyebrows were gone. My hair was gone. I mean, just like smoke, tinder, just, it was awful. It didn't hurt. I just remember thinking, ah, oh my gosh, like what did I do to myself? So then I run into the house, right? And on my way into the house, I have no idea that the back of me is kind of on fire. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I'm running through the yard, a 12 year old boy on fire. He's booking it to get to the bathroom so I can look at my, my disgusting mess of a face. And as I pass, the, the porch to get into the house, my, my family has this big blue barrel full of cardboard. I mean, it was like this tall and it was just chuck full of cardboard. I don't know why it was there, but it was. And as I beeline past it, like an ember, like <laughs> comes off of my shoulder and lands into the bucket of cardboard. And so I'm, I run into the, the bathroom and the rest of the fire had gone out at that point. I don't know, maybe I was just running so fast. But as I got into the bathroom, I just, I remember seeing smoke and like there was like one like lone eyebrow that had survived the fire, just, you know, waving in the wind. <laughs> but I, it was so awful. And I just remember the stench of it. So then I'm trying to find a hat 
to get to school. I have completely given up on this smoker at this point. I'm not gonna go to school looking like this. So I, I find a hat and I, I gently press it onto my head because it's like so, so freaking sore. And at this moment, there's a knock on the door, right? And I open the door and there's this guy standing there and I can see him clear as day. He's in like, you know those like shorty shorts? Like where they're like this long and a guy shouldn't be wearing shorts that are that long, but he was wearing shorts that were that long. And he had like this blue shirt on with all these little white anchors on it and he had really long hair. And he looks at me and he says, hey man, <laughs> hey man, I think your house is on fire. So I was like, what? So I read it and he left, he just walked away, right? So first of all, Mr. Shorty Shorts, if you're watching this video, you entrusted a house fire to a 12 year old, you moron. That's what you did. He walked away, his conscience was clear. I walked to the back of my house and that, that big, blue barrel full of cardboard was just just going like a huge fire and it was going up the side of my house and I like I know I should have called 911 I should have done something but I didn't I, I went and grabbed the, the hose right and I'm spraying this going oh my gosh I'm gonna lose my house and my family's gonna kill me so I'm spraying this like big barrel of fire and I remember just like just kicking it over and like fire going everywhere because I wanted to get it away from the house and like like these flaming balls of cardboard fire are shooting all over the yard and I'm spraying them and they're not getting any smaller and then I remember dude you gotta spray the base of the fire so I spray the base of the fire and after a while like they, it kind of all goes out right and I just I do one of these things, right? <laughs> I'm way late for school by now. I'm so freaking late for school and there's a big black like plume of smoke up the side of my house. And I'm just looking at this as a 12 year old. There's like a, you know, a hose of water in my hand. The water's just like spraying out. And I'm just standing here like completely defeated. But I beat the fire and the meat didn't get smoked. <laughs> and I have lost all of my hair and my eyebrows. So then I go to school. What else are you gonna do, right? I'm not gonna call my friends. My 12 year old brain says, if I leave this, the scene of the crime, they'll never know it was me. So I, I turn off the hose and I went to school way late and I got in trouble for being late. And when I got to school, the, the teachers seemed to have some pity on me because I had no eyebrows and no hair and they could smell me. So they just let me, like, they just let it slide and they let me sit in, the, in, in my seat. When I got home, when I got home, my father-in-law is standing on the porch waiting for me. <laughs> And he was not a stern man. I, he never yelled at me once in my life. But he was standing there like this. Not with a mean look on his face, but just like a, what the freak happened, man? And as I walk up the stairs to go in, he, he looks at me wearing a hat. And he can smell me. He can smell the rotting flesh and the burning hair. <laughs> he takes off my hat and he sees the poor soul that I am. He puts the hat back on and he walks away. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't do anything. He just leaves me in my pitiful state and he just forgives me and he cleans it up and I think he just chalks it up to a stupid boy just being stupid and oh my gosh. So I tell you that story guys because as an entrepreneur, you are quite often putting gas on the things you should not be putting gas on. You're putting your face down by that fire and lighting it and, and then you're running around with your head cut off, trying to think of ways to put it out. So look at how you're running your business. What are you doing? You're, you're, you know, you're spending hours upon hours just worrying about stuff and fretting and checking email and doing things that maybe you shouldn't be doing instead of actually out there being with people, adding value and actually making the right decision. So next time you're doing the wrong thing with your time, I want you to picture 12 year old Eddie with his face next to the fire putting a match in because that's you that's what you're doing right now instead get out there and do something of value next when you are completely just drowning in your own despair and things just aren't working for you a lot of this has to do with how you're mentally just living your day so what's happening is you're sitting there and you're faced with a problem and instead of getting up and just tackling it and just laying it out and being done with it you sit in your chair and you go and your body language changes and your shoulders slump and you start breathing shallow and then all of a sudden you start playing out scenarios in your head of all of the things that in your mind are going to go 
wrong. And you start thinking of how you're not gonna be able to pay for things, and how you're gonna lose your customers, and how you're gonna lose your house, and how just, it's, it's over. And oh my gosh, what are you gonna do? And you actually spend 30 minutes, or an hour, or sometimes days or weeks in that funk. It is an absolute mental funk. So if you're in that space right now, here's what you gotta do. You gotta change three things. And I got this stuff from Anthony Robbins. Uh, look, yeah, this guy right here. You've probably seen him on, uh, you know, he's, yeah, you'll recognize his face. Go read his books, they're awesome. But he talks about when you're in that space where things aren't working out for you mentally, you gotta change three things. You gotta change, number one, your physiology. So when you're, you know, you're down here and you're just like, oh, you gotta stand up, <laughs> pull your shoulders back, breathe strong, be confident, and get out of your friggin' office. The goal here is to change the pattern that you're in. You're in a mental pattern where you're just completely destroying yourself. You've gotta change that. So you get up and you move and you go somewhere else and you do something different. Stop looking at your computer, stop reading your emails, stop thinking about all the bad stuff and go out and shake someone's hand, take someone to lunch, smile, do something. The next thing you gotta do is change what you're focused on. So right now you're focused on the problem. You're focused on all the things that are gonna go wrong. Instead you've gotta change your focus onto something else. You're gonna look at the opportunity in the situation or just change and you know, instead of thinking about the customer that didn't pay you, Start thinking about ways to improve your product or, or you know, training an employee or something. Just get your focus off of that crap, okay? Number three, you've gotta change the language that you're using in your own head. You know when you're sitting there and you're saying to yourself, I'm screwed, I am going out of business, I can't do this, I don't know how to do this, I didn't get an MBA, I don't know what to do, oh! You start having like this complete meltdown and you're having that discussion with yourself in your head. You've gotta change that language. And you've got to start thinking of, okay, I'm smart, I can figure this out, I'm gonna get my best people together, we're gonna come up with opportunities and solutions, we're actually gonna come out ahead of this. Guys, I do this all of the time. I don't have my crap together all of the time. I, I screw up all of the time in my business. And there are times when things go wrong, I sit there and go, oh my gosh, Like, what, what did we just do? And then I catch myself. I stand up, I change my physiology, I get out of the office, I change what I'm focusing on, and I start telling myself a different story. And guys, it works every freaking time. Whenever something's wrong in your business, it's just usually your head, okay? Nothing can be over, nothing can beat you if you just get out of this mental space that you're in and start getting smart and using your resources. Here's my question for you guys. What are you going to do differently right now to get out of your mental funk that you're in? List it in the comments down below so that we can build up a list of tips and tricks for other entrepreneurs who are gonna come along and watch this video. Maybe you're gonna take your dog for a walk. Maybe you're gonna go meet a new employee. Maybe you're gonna do just something. What are you gonna do to change your life, to change your mindset, and take your business to the next level? Hey guys, I hope you liked this video today. If you haven't yet done it, click that big, beautiful red subscribe button over there. When you do that, your business is gonna go from this big to this big. It's just a matter of fact. There's a lot of magic in that button. Also, it'll give you access to all of the videos I create in the future to help you build a business that's going to set you free. Thanks for watching, guys. I love you. I can't wait to see you in the next video.